We're also getting new insight about the actual airplane at the center of this crash. Joining us live is ABC World News Tonight aviation analyst John Nance. John, what type of plane are we talking about here and what is its safety record? Far, we're talking about a very, very reliable airplane built by the De Havilland Corporation uh, out of Canada. Uh, some of these planes are over 50 years old. Many of them have been rebuilt. They're excellent airplanes with a good history. And uh, this is some, not something that you see happen uh, on a regular basis. Now, in Alaska, they're in use quite a bit. And the accidents we've had up there have not been the airplane coming apart in midair or anything of that nature. It's been uh, pilots flying them into ridge lines and things of that nature and midair collisions. So. Uh, uh, this this aircraft is really extremely reliable, and this is a puzzle. And John, I just can't help but think about the fact that if this plane is going down with some sort of engine trouble, it's a float plane. It's designed to land on water. Yes. Given what we know, what is your best guess potentially of some of the circumstances here? There really is no best guess, Jake, at this particular point. There are too many things uh, that are, are not known about the flight path. And as a matter of fact, if anybody saw the airplane actually go down, uh, certainly the National Transportation Safety Board wants to hear from them as fast as possible. Uh, the thing is, the thing is that uh, th this airplane it came out of the sky in one form or another in a way that, uh, that we have not tracked yet. So we don't know whether it was engine failure. Uh, this is probably a turbine-powered aircraft. Uh, the original ones were piston. Either way, they're good and reliable. But if the engine fails, you should be able to get it down to the water and put it in safely. It's going to be a difficult thing to do because you've got to estimate where you are above the waves. But it can be done. Mm -hmm. And John, the Coast Guard's been there all night. They are doing their recovery mission. The NTSB is on their way there. How do we, uh, how long should we expect this particular investigation to go on? How long should it last? It'll last uh, probably the surficial area until they uh, have been able to recover the airplane and the uh, victims uh, who are unaccounted for at the present time. And then, of course, the, the basic investigation will take uh, a lot of time, probably five to six months. And what specifically would they be looking for this morning, John? This morning, they'll be looking for the wreckage and they'll be looking for uh, the remains of any of the individuals who went down uh, in the airplane. Uh, just bringing the wreckage up, I think, is going to be absolutely necessary because uh, you need to find out what the situation was with the flight controls, with the propeller. Uh, the, the whole thing uh, requires uh, looking at the tin, as, as the uh, investigators say. But that'll go on for a little while. And uh, But the background investigation, that can take up to five to six months. All right. John Nance, uh, we appreciate your time this morning. Good to see you again. We'll, of course, keep checking back uh, with this investigation still underway this morning.